I think I'm crashing. I'm having a meat crash. Uh, the USA South is famous for its deadly delicious cuisine. Trust me, I saw this sitting inside about 20 gallons of oil, but it doesn't feel heavy. Some call it junk food, but around here, they call it comfort food. Oh, Glenda, mm -hmm. I want to propose to you right now. <laughs> Fried, greasy, slathered in sauce, doused in sugary sweetness. Comfort food is about pure indulgence. Well, the sandwich is where the magic happens. We have a slider bun, and we put the pig ear on it. Today, we're in Jackson, Mississippi, taking on the most unique comfort creations in the South. It has kind of like a homemade feel to it. From flavorful food pairings you would never expect to see together. When you're eating, all bits are off. To Southern classics that have been around for decades. Wrapped in tinfoil, the same yeah, way they did it hundreds of years ago. But here in the South, we kind of make it with a corn meal. Oh my gosh, it's like opening a little Christmas present. Mm -hmm. So block off some time in your post-lunch nap. We're headed for a deep food coma in Jackson, Mississippi. Sugar's Place, named after Glenda's mother. She and her son Donovan have owned this place for 11 years. Donovan has been in the restaurant business since he was about 15. I, however, took a different path. I worked at the phone company for 30 years. I would always tell him there were limited choices for lunch. So he came downtown one day and saw this little spot and he said, Mama, it's empty, this rent's affordable, let's do it. And that's been 11 years ago. So right now we're in the kitchen of Sugar's place. Over here is Donovan. I need to interview him about this place, but they're a little bit busy right now. I don't know how this is gonna work out. Hey, how you doing, man? How's it going? Do you have like a half a second, maybe 30 seconds? Uh, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> All right, we'll talk while you move. As a child, Donovan picked up more than a few culinary moves from his grandmother. Now, he's the head chef, cooking up Southern classics from scratch. He's especially known for this unusual pairing. Chicken and waffles, how did this pair come to be? It actually comes out of the jazz clubs. Oh. Late nights, the jazz musicians would get out of playing the club two, three, four in the morning. It was too late for dinner, but it was too early for breakfast. And those two Southern favorites somehow got together, it became a late night staple. That's incredible. The chicken is dipped in an egg batter and dredged in seasoned flour and then fried until cooked through. Are you putting syrup right on the wings? When you're eating, all bets are off. Oh, you do whatever you want. It's whatever. It's waffles, it's wings, it's powdered sugar sometimes. We get all kinds of varieties, but we stay classy. The waffles are a mix of flour, salt, baking powder, sugar, and some secret ingredients that Glenda won't even tell me, even though we're best friends now. I'm from Jackson, born and raised in Jackson. How has this place changed from when you were younger until now? Tremendously. This is an old historic area of Jackson. I actually remember shopping in this area with my parents for groceries and clothes and everything because this is where black people had to come shop. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be a part of the revitalization of Fair Street. Well, I've been here 11 years and it hasn't happened yet. So mm -hmm. I realized that I was gonna have to unhooch my star to theirs and rise by myself. Yeah. And so here we are and uh, it's, it's happening. Do you know I've never had chicken and waffles? Never? This is my first time you ever. You are in for a treat. How could the chicken possibly play into this? It's okay. completely unknown. Because you have the sweetness of the syrup along with the saltiness of the chicken. And you know, savory and sweet are you two taste you want to go for when you're eating. It's like Bonnie and Clyde. Exactly. Start cutting your waffle up. Get your good little mouth sized piece there. You don't want to get chicken in the syrup. You want to keep them separated oh, until yeah. they meet into your mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I've got syrupy, buttery mm -hmm. waffle okay. right here. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna come behind it with the salty chicken. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Glenda, mm -hmm. I want to propose to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Salt has a way of bringing out the sweetness. It's mm -hmm. that contrast. It's exactly. like the like yin said, and yang. But it's something about that salt and that 
sir, mm. that marries very well. So when did you first try this? To be honest, we had sold tons of these before I tried it. I'm not much on sweets. I love fried chicken. But then next, I said, if you need chicken and waffles, let me try this. And I've been in love ever since. Absolutely. I love it. The only thing that makes me sad is I can't have this kind again until I come back. But right, I will absolutely right. so come back. So give you reason to come back to Jackson, Mississippi. Absolutely. <laughs> Behind me, BD Street Grocery and Market, an iconic institution here in this city for 79 years. We're about to head in for a sandwich first. It seems, well, right across the street, there's another place. This is Babes. My little sister used to have a Barbie playhouse that color. I'm not sure what they do in there, but you know, if it's late at night and you're hungry, just walk across the street from your toy store or whatever it is and come here and get a sandwich. It's great. It's a strip club. Mac Baldwin first opened Beatty Street Grocery in 1946. In 1960, they added a sandwich shop to differentiate themselves from other grocery stores. What is the food that most people are coming here for? Well, the number one thing is the burger. We mm. sell more burgers than anything. And then the fried bologna would be right up there with the burger. Granddaughter of the Beatty Street founder, Mary Hardin. She manages the day-to-day, -day, ensuring the yum standards are at an all-time high. What I'm thinking today is cheeseburger, uh -huh. sausage po' boy, sure. fried bologna. The Trinity. We can do it. First, the Beatty Street Burger. 16 ounces of grilled seasoned beef. The buns, lightly toasted and smeared with mayonnaise and butter. Chopped onions, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, mustard, ketchup, and those beefy patties. Oh, shiz. Guys, look at it. It's a, like a rainbow of burgery colors. Yellow cheese, red tomato, green lettuce, but who cares? Brown bread. My mouth is too small for this. Wow, that is real big. I think what makes it extra special and kind of homey is the mayonnaise. It's super creamy and tangy. It's got that Burger King thing going on where they got the tomato, ketchup, and mayonnaise together. That is a complete mess. I gotta say, there's something about the food. It just feels like a loving girlfriend or boyfriend made it for you or me. I think I'm crashing. I'm having a meat crash. How long have you been at that helm running this place? Now I've been working here since I was five, running oh. it the last probably about 15 years. You grew up in Jackson? I did. I've been told the potholes are legendary. The potholes are. There's one right in front of my store. I seem to hit it every time I come down here. But... Oh, jeez. <laughs> How has Jackson changed? Originally, when my grandfather bought it, it was just a neighborhood. But then it began to industrialize, and there was a lot of industry around here, and now a lot of them moved out. So Jackson's working really hard to get it started all over again. Next on my hunger hit list, the Sausage Po' Boy. Made with grilled local red rose sausages and topped with all the usual suspects, plus a fried egg. Oh, there's so much happening in here. That looks so good. Oh, that is beautiful. Nice soft bread. That meat, it has kind of like a homemade feel to it. it doesn't feel it commercial. It has a to it. has a little bit of kick. It does. This is the real reason we came here. If I broke into a sandwich factory while drunk and also high, this is what I would make. A fried bologna sandwich. A thick round slice of bologna deep fried in hot oil until browned and almost crispy. Slide that between toasted bread and anything else you can find in the fridge. Listen, I don't know any other restaurant where one can order a bologna sandwich like this, so this is certainly unique. Wow. That is no joke. I don't know how you do it. I think the mayonnaise is super important because it's got a great tanginess to it. Pickle, tomato, all coming together. How much is this one? Less than five bucks? Four twenty-five. I love it. For you personally, what is Southern food? Well, it's comfort food, of course. We all know that. And everything, most Southern food kind of equates to good old fried food, mm. you know, that you indulge in as yeah. you're going out. I feel very comfortable. Our last destination, Big Apple Inn. We opened up in 1939. Five sandwiches and hot tamales. That's all we have. Is this a similar recipe? Same recipe. That is exactly. amazing. 
This place has been around for 80 years, and Gino Lee is the fourth generation owner. My great grandfather. When he first opened the restaurant in 39, the butcher was throwing away things like a pigtail, pig feet, pig ears. So oh. he gave my great grandfather the pig ears, and he figured out a way that they could get tender enough to eat. Pig ear sandwiches, one of the most unique foods in the USA South. Quite literally, a pig's ear put between two buns. The only time I've tried pig ear, I was in the Philippines. You can really see actually some hard cartilage here. Ooh, that is, um... and I found that it was extremely tough. So how do you finagle that into a sandwich? Boil for three days. <laughs> three days? Three days, yeah. Can I show you? Yeah. These pig ears were already cut here. I mean, it's almost like leather. I mean, that's how thick it is. Yeah, yeah. it's super I mean, hard. If you look, it's like thick, hard cartilage, this whole thing. Really Even just a little bit of skin, I can't. I know, I mean, you, there's no biting that at all. Yeah. So this is what you start with. That's what we start with. And then we put it in a very large pressure cooker and just pressure cook it for 45 minutes and then it down. You just saw the previous one, super hard, and here, it just goes right through it, like nothing. That's crazy. Do you put some seasonings in here? We cook a 30 pound batch of pig ears with a half a cup of salt, and that's all. This will go in the bun along with coleslaw, mustard, and homemade chili sauce. So first of all, I love that these are like little sliders. They're tiny, and they're cute, and they get fit in your mouth very easily. Like, I had a burger at Beatty's, and it, trust me, it's very good. Wow, I was born with a small mouth. <laughs> and I couldn't get it in there, it was a mess. You know, a big guy like me, coming in, hungry. How many do you think I can put down? Hungry? I'd say about six. The average order is about four. Oh, nice. So we're gonna get to this in a second. Okay. While well, it's still hot, but first, tamales. Oh yeah. What do we do? Tamales here are a mixture of turkey, cornmeal, corn flour, and lard. Seasoned with cayenne, cumin, garlic, black pepper, and red chilies. They're rolled in a corn husk and boiled until cooked through. I didn't know you could wrap them in tinfoil. Well, my great grandfather, they used to just stack them around inside the pot and grab them one at a time. Mm. But they lose so many. When you grab one, the meat will fall out. So we figured out if we wrap them in tinfoil, they stay together. And the taste is the same? The taste is exactly the same. Oh my gosh, it's like opening a little Christmas present. Mm. Oh, what did I get? What did Santa bring? <laughs> Mm. This is what opened us up 80 years ago. Oh, man. When we first opened up, this is what we sold and nothing else. Is this a similar recipe? Same recipe. That is the exact amazing. same Amazing. Great, it's like soft, warm, steamy, kind of humid, like the weather here. <laughs> yeah. Mm. A spice that a lot of people don't get is we have cumin. It gives a good little flavor. And what is that? Is it, it's not cayenne, is it? There is cayenne in there. It's got a little bit of kick to it, but I mean, American level kick. It's not, it's, no, it's no, not it's so not intense. Bad at all, not at all. Remember those red row sausages? Here, Gino squeezes out the sausage guts, tosses the casings, and serves up what he calls smokies. We'll take that sausage and we'll grind it up. And so it looks like hamburger meat. Take it on a griddle and just take a big gob of it, kind of like a sloppy joe, and put it on the sandwich with the same mustard sauce, slaw, and our homemade hot sauce. So if you look at it, do you see a little orange right there? Yeah. That's the hot sauce. We just sort just of put a little bit. It's not to burn yet. What, you thought I couldn't handle it? Oh, oh one bowl. my god. This is the level five spice. You look so red right now. So do you. <laughs> you look tan. You probably can. All right. Let's try it out. Man, this is great. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man, I love these. That is delicious. Yeah. This is probably our number one center. It's a great combination of ingredients. Mm -hmm. The crunch, the spice, the savoriness. You're doing my job for me. Oh. <laughs> That's great. I can just shut up and eat. <laughs> Take a look at that. Mm. A big floppy piece of ear. <laughs> this pig was just flopping around all happy just probably a few days ago. And now he's in my sandwich. Isn't that crazy? Mm. What? Is that tender that is? It's got like a little snap to it. Like that cartilage in there, it's very soft. The way I put it is, you had bacon, it's not cooked all the way, kind of soft a little bit. Yeah. Imagine biting into bacon, which is, you can tell the pork flavor, and um, al dente lasagna noodle at the same time. Yeah, exactly, That's a little gelatinous. <laughs> yeah. I would say it has a bold, porky flavor, mm -hmm. but then all the other ingredients kind of lighten it up a little bit. It's a great balance. In the South, everybody ate pig ears. That's all black folks could afford. You know, they couldn't afford the best cuts of meat, so they learned how to cook pig ears and pig snouts and pig feet and pig tails. You know, some people just want a plate of pig ears. Maybe a little hot sauce on top of it. It's no, a pig, pig ear salad. It is. Yeah. It is. My man, this was incredible. Oh well, man, I'm glad Thank you, you so by. much for the food and for the history lesson, too. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Comfort food is about eating in the moment. 
Food made with love to create maximal mouth pleasure. And nowhere makes you feel the love more than the South. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. If you show me